Welcome into the February 21st edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast. I'm Mike DeStefano with Dave Morissuti. The Maple Leafs split the weekend back-to-back against Montreal and the Blackhawks. Ryan O'Reilly and Nola Chari made their debuts this weekend. Let's talk about them, Dave. All that more coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, Every day. Hello and welcome into the Lockdown Leafs podcast, once up shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co-host Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA, Lockdown Leafs, a daily Maple Leaf-centric podcast. Be sure to subscribe for free. Rev, get your podcast from also up on YouTube now as well. Um, got a whole whack of new subscribers too. So if you're returning from, uh, I guess if you subbed up recently because of the Ryan O'Reilly reaction video, appreciate it. We put out new content each and every day throughout the week, Monday through Friday, excluding the holiday Monday, which we just, you know, just had. So uh, it's Tuesday, so we'll be right back at her. And it's a big weekend, I guess, to be, uh, you know, to be recounted considering Ryan O'Reilly and Noel Chari made their debuts, Dave. What'd you think of them? Um, well, considering the circumstances for which they came to the Leafs, pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. I thought both of them had a, had a presence. Both of them got a, figured into the goal scoring, which was nice to see. But yeah, I mean, considering they haven't had a full practice yet since joining the Leafs, not a lot I can complain about minus the result of the Sunday game. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there, but uh, we'll we'll stick to these two right now. Um, yeah, I think I was pleasantly surprised. Well, not pleasantly. I, I, I kind of anticipated them to, to, you know, factor in right away. The two veterans of the game and, and two guys who know what they need to do to find success, regardless, you know, who's on their team. Like, they know what their game is and the style of game that they need to bring in order to find that success. So I thought they, they brought it pretty well, like Ryan O'Reilly being a 200-foot menace. Um, you know, did some good things in the defensive end and also, you know, offensively did some good things too and really helped kind of round out that second power play unit, which seemed like PP2 was PP1 on 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 uh, Saturday against Montreal. They looked really good, and O'Reilly picks up a point, obviously, on the bunting goal there, um, which was maybe shortly after the power play had just ended, but technically it was uh, part of the power play mix at the very least. Look, I, I thought that they looked good. My only question to you is, and we were debating this, you know, when the trade went down, is where exactly do you play Ryan O'Reilly? And we thought, okay, either he'll play on the wing to start or maybe he'll play on third line center to start. We'll see. I didn't anticipate him getting the 2C uh, assignment on night one just because I thought they might want to ease him into it with a bit of a, you know, starting on the wing or down the lineup a little bit. but. Jelani Keefe said, hey, get right into the fire, sink or swim, put him in the the two hole, kind of caught me off guard a little bit. What about you? Yeah, I mean, it was surprising at first, but then I thought Kevin Bieksa, when asked about it on the on the broadcast, he kind of sums it up perfectly. You're bringing the guy in. He hasn't had a single practice. Put him in a position where he's going to have the most, most success, but namely playing him down the middle, which is kind of where we expected him. But also playing him with good players, you know, offensive zone, not have to rely on him too much right out of the gate. So I, I thought that I thought it made sense. Would it have been surprised if he was a third line center? No, not at all. But I think he just wanted to have the chemistry there, you know, keep that third line intact. At least have one line that's not or two lines if you're counting the first line too that are not. You know, throwing it all out of whack. At least you'll have those two to kind of fall back on. But yeah, a, a little surprise at first when I saw it, but then when I heard the explanation, it made a little more sense. Yeah, I think night one he was like twelve for fourteen on the draws too. So you know, when you're when you're that strong in the faceoff dot, 
it's probably a good thing to have you taking faceoffs uh, all the time. So having them, you know, as the as the main centerman, I suppose, does make sense. I, I just, you know, moving Tavares to the wing, I know it's something that has been talked about. I just wasn't sure if if you know that was something that Keith was going to be willing to do right out of the gate. That that's all. Like I think it's probably a smart move. You know, I think that this lineup probably works best that way. Also, that line is going to become a cycle nightmare. Like, they are going to cycle the puck like nobody's business and play pretty heavy brand of hockey, I think, with those three now. Um, which, to be honest, that's that's where a lot of the, the those teams find success in the playoffs. Whether it's Tampa or Boston, Colorado, they play a very heavy cycle game and they create chances, you know, that way. So uh, I'll be curious to see how Toronto decides to uh, to work those guys and see if that kind of becomes a bread and butter type of, of offensive um, offensive. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Scheme for lack of a better word. See if that's the offensive scheme for these guys in that uh, strategy is the word I was looking for strategy. Plan strategies. That's like, yeah. Strategy in, in the, uh, in the offensive zone. Um, Noel Chari scored this weekend he got a goal in the lost against the chicago blackhawks but you know he's a guy too who just brings a lot to the table he had like five hits and five shots in his first game and then scored in in the next game i think that noel chari um he was i mean we talked about him during the trade but obviously most of the talk revolved around ryan o'reilly but it's not sleep on this addition here that's a that's a big time add to the bottom six and for a team that's lacked scoring depth, he's not a big time goal scorer, but he can put the puck in the back of the net. We saw it happen, you know, this past weekend. I think he's a big boost to that fourth line. I do. I, I thought that when I saw it was like when I saw that it was Noel Chard, and you go and see the guy has 10 goals. He had 10 goals when he was brought over to the Leafs, right? And yeah, you know, that's playing fourth line minutes, like playing fourth line minutes, playing for a St. Louis team that's not really big on having guys lower in the lineup generating scoring chances either. He's not playing the power place. So that that's why I was like, okay, I, it, you can expect something. But when you watch him play, it's not the fact that he scored, but it's where he scored. Where is he going to score, right? He knows exactly where he needs to be. Um, and that's something I think that, you know, he's gonna he was playing with Kerfoot and Zach Aston Reese. You know, Kerfoot's gonna be able to find him. He's got that offensive ability to do it. And you know, he, he just knows that my job, okay, get to the net, good things will happen. You know, and 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 those guys were pretty good at cycling the puck too. You watched, and there were a few times, I think it was the Montreal game. I think I saw it in the Chicago game too, where they were able to cycle it down yeah. low a bit. Yep. And that's that's what a fourth line has to do. You don't necessarily have to score all the time. Spend a little more time in the offensive zone than you have to do in the defensive zone. And they had a few really good chances in that Montreal game, too. Like, even off the face-off draw, I think it was, what, Zach Aston Reese had a chance. Kerfoot would have had, a, had an opportunity. So, you know, both, I think, made, uh, made really strong debuts in the Montreal game. And then, you know, played well, I guess, relatively in the Chicago game. But... I had heard what their Saturday was like. I think Saturday they were playing on on just pure adrenaline. So apparently Friday after, like the trade was made at what, like 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, something like that, like 10 p.m. Yeah. So apparently O'Reilly, like I was listening to this on the Chris Johnston show today, and apparently he went to St. Louis and, and went to the rink, picked up their equipment, and then got on a bird Friday morning uh, or Friday evening, arrived to Toronto Friday, Saturday morning, um, missed morning skate because they were getting sized up and ready to go for the game, and then played that night. And then got on a bird, went to Chicago, and they had to play a game that was less than 24 hours later, um, literally like 20 hours until puck drop, essentially, uh, from when you know that game started. So uh, it, it was just a whirlwind of a day, probably on the Friday, and then the Saturday – Come Sunday, I think the team was a little bit white. The team was a little beat uh, going into a second night of a back-to-back. You had the sick goaltender in Ilya Samsonov, um, who didn't play great uh, against Chicago. And then it was kind of the Patrick Kane revenge game, in a way. 
I think that's where we can, you know, kind of chop that game up to. This is a little bit of a revenge game for old Patty Kane, Chicago Blackhawks. Yeah, and Sandine was, uh, you know, he couldn't go. That to that forced, you know, some guys that maybe wouldn't have played the second half of the back to back to have to play the second half of the back to back. Namely, a guy like Justin Hall, which I was surprised that Justin Hall got back in against the Canadians. And then played on both, and then obviously had to play both games. That was a little bit of a surprise just because we kind of talked to him. We thought, you know, keep the winning lineup. Technically, he did, was in the winning ways in, against Montreal, but in, in Chicago, hate to say it, he wasn't exactly giving Patty Kane some tough defending to go up against. Wow. See, that, that, see, that's the, like, <sighs> Yeah, he didn't, and it's because he's playing up the lineup. It's not like he's he's the third pair guy, and when you play him with Morgan Riley up on the top pair, he's gonna get exposed. Like that's that's flat out the problem with Justin Hall, and and you know because it was Timmins who was coming in, you weren't gonna put him up with with Morgan Riley. You didn't want to flip around all of your defensive pairings, so they ended up putting Timmins with Brody because they had played together and they had some comfort level. Um, you know when Riley was injured. I don't know. There's, there's, uh, there was, yeah, I guess you could say you were a little questionable to see Justin Hall play on that game, but then come Sunday, I don't know. I, what else are you really expecting out of those guys and, and him in particular up on the top pair? It's kind of what you anticipate. And I would imagine, hopefully, Sandine is good to go for the next game. I didn't hear anything today come about that. I think they had day off anyway. So probably won't know what the situation is um, against Buffalo until uh, game day morning or t- today, later on this morning, rather. Uh, so we'll see what ends up happening there. But if not, I would imagine that Justin Hall maybe won't be uh maybe won't be up on the top pair. Like I probably I honestly I probably look and see what Timmons looks like on the left. Like I, I, that's what I'm thinking maybe you do or maybe you put Lilligrid up on the top pair, you get Brody and Hall, maybe Brody Hall and then Gio and, and Timmons. That might be the situation if Sandine can't go. Yeah, I was just about to say the easiest thing is, you know, first off, yeah, I don't want to see Car Timmons have to switch sides. I would have said, yeah, move Lilligren with Riley for the game. Then you can have Gio and yeah, Gio and um, Timmons or Gio and Hall, whichever one works best. Uh, to me, that should have been kind of where where Sheldon Keith went because like Riley and Hall don't usually play with each other that often. Like I don't know why he didn't just go with the old faithful. They have like they they've played a together bit. a little bit here and there, and like they've had a little bit of success. I mean, I don't know. What was Old Faithful for you? Well, I could just have Riley and Lilligren just for one. Even if it's for one game, I would have rather done that than Riley and Hall. Yeah, yeah. Probably could have done that as well. That could have been it. And then you put Hall with Geo, or maybe. Because I um, saw that Hall lineup and I saw those deep pairings and I had a cold shiver go down my spine. Yeah, well, and for good reason. Obviously, look at look at what happened. So, yeah. wasn't uh, wasn't a great night for for Toronto and, and the defense. That's for sure. Um, but overall, like second night of a back to back, I think a lot got taken out of them in that in that Montreal game. A lot of them were kind of riding a, a high after the trade and the debut of Ryan O'Reilly and Nolachari. O'Reilly ends up getting the belt that night, which is pretty sweet. Um, but didn't quite have as good a night uh, the the second time around. All right, Dave, let's uh, let's take one more quick break, and when we get back, uh, we'll tee up tonight's game, Leafs and Sabers. So Leafs right back at it against uh, a familiar division foe in Buffalo. Uh, before we do, uh, why don't you tell one of the tell our good folks about one of today's show sponsors? Yep, and that is a product that I've been using every day, Athletic Greens. Obviously, I'm someone who likes to live a life of convenience. Don't want to be looking to take a million different pills and supplements, have them take one morning, different ones in the afternoon, and then maybe some before I go to bed. So the great thing about AG1 is that it's one delicious scoop, and I absorb 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start my day off right. This special blend in greens helps support gut health, nervous system, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all of those things that I listed. So, 
you know, obviously, as I mentioned, I just wanted something that I can remember to take every day, once a day, easily one scoop, put into water. And obviously, when I listened to and I got some information about it with AG1, it had tons of benefits. You know, everyone takes some form of multivitamin. It is important to choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits. It's one thing you can do every single day to take care of yourself. And of course, I like a little bit, you know, a little bit of a bonus when I'm getting something like this. And AG1 will give your give you a one year supply of vitamin D with your subscription, which is so important to add in these winter months when we don't get that much sunlight. Of course, the big benefit was the cost. It costs you less than three dollars a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look after your health. To make it easy, Athletic Green is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Welcome back into the Lockdown Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano, Dave Morasuti, uh, Leafs and Sabres tonight in Buffalo. You're going to the game? I'm going to game boots in the ground. This is my first away Leafs game since I saw the Leafs play in Montreal back in 20, I want to say 2016, 2017. Wow. Back when like Austin Matthews did not have a mustache. Back in, well, it would be his, what, his rookie year, right? 16, 17? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was in his rookie year that I went to see them in Montreal. Yeah, I I like I like that uh Buffalo's got like a good barn to watch hockey because it's it's pretty small and there's never a bad seat in the house. Like you could be anywhere in that arena and and you know have a pretty good view of the view of the ice, I find. Like growing up in Niagara Falls, like that's where we went to go watch hockey games. Like I didn't go to to the ACC to go watch the Leafs or anything. We went to Buffalo and got tickets at a large discount um, <laughs> as opposed to having to pay stupid inflated Toronto prices. So I've watched many a hockey games in, uh, in Buffalo's arena. You, uh, you going to stop and grab, grab some wings ahead of time, some Buffalo wings somewhere. I will be going in early to, you know, just, I didn't want to avoid any issues over the border. So I will definitely be venturing out to find some decent uh, wings before the game. Okay. If there's anyone listening who's been there, I need some recommendations. Down, yes. Drop us a comment down below. Let us know. Dave needs some recommendations. I'll text you mine. I'm curious to see what the good people uh, listen to this podcast who ventured over the border for a time or two and got themselves some chicken wings. Maybe there's some uh, Sabres fans or some Toronto fans who live in Buffalo who might have uh, you know, an answer for you on the place to go. Um, in and around the arena. I mean, I know of a few places like before a Bills game or whatnot, some places that are a little out of the way, but around the arena, see if there's any good spots for uh, for Dave to check out. And we'll get the 411 on it tomorrow um, after the game. Uh, what are you anticipating tonight? Like, t- t- Buffalo always gives Toronto problems. Yeah. Always gives Toronto problems. They did win earlier this year. We'll give them that. They did get the victory last time these two teams played. Toronto won 5-2. But um, for whatever reason, they always have issues when it comes to beating the Buffalo Sabres. Yeah, and I mean, the Sabres, look, I mean, Tage Thompson is having an unreal season, right? And I believe he scored in the in that game that Toronto did play against Buffalo. No, probably. He scores every single game they yeah. play uh He's he's been, he's been one of the best stories, I think, in the league this year just because he gets signed to that long-term deal. A lot of questions about it, and Sabres might have gotten a bit of a discount with that deal considering when they signed it. So, yeah, I, I'm expecting the Tage Thompson show. 
you know, the defenses look pretty good. Darlene, Power, there's, there's a, there's, and the Sabres are right in the thick of the playoff race, right? Yeah. There's a lot of movement with that wild card standing right now. And this is an important game for Buffalo. And if they're going to show how that they are a playoff team, they're going to have to do it against a team that is currently well ahead of them in the division, right? This is a, every team kind of treats the Leafs like their Stanley Cup. I am assuming Buffalo will will be uh, looking to do that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Like they they're gonna have to wake up for this game, and they typically do. Like they they definitely do wake up for the game against uh, you know their QEW rivals. And look, Buffalo. Just looking at it now, they're four points out of a playoff spot, but they got six games in hand. Six, six games in hand on the Florida Panthers for that final wild card spot. But in order to make do like you got to make way you got to win the games right that you have in hand so one of these coming up against toronto it's going to be difficult um for them to do so just you know toronto's coming off another tough loss to a a, a non-playoff team a bottom end team you know so toronto you're hoping uh has a much better day <laughs> than they did on sunday and it was an off day on monday and then they, it's go time so Ryan O'Reilly still won't have a full practice. I guess he won't have his first full practice till tomorrow, right? Like after the game on on Wednesday, they'll get their full practice in, and then they play. They don't play again until Friday, so we had a couple of practices in Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, but still, it's three games before he gets his first full practice. And he's a player who I have circled tonight. Going back into Buffalo, a team where he basically said, "Like this is a toxic organization. I don't want to be here." trade me now and I, i'm guessing that there's less animosity because of what tage thompson turned into but I I, still- i'm expecting a little bit uh i mean if i could i would have an o'reilly Leafs jersey just for the sabers crowd that'd be uh but um yeah i'm expecting the sabers crowd to still feel a little hurt about that ryan o'reilly uh yeah i, I think the boo birds will still be out there and I think he's going to score tonight. Like, this is his chance to get his first as a Maple Leaf. He's come close. Like, against Chicago, there was a point. Right like, off the post, didn't he? Right. Could not have asked for a better opportunity. He gets in alone on the breakaway, you know, gets his sent in alone off the iron. And it was, it looked like it was going to be a beautiful backhand, too. Yeah. And then, the, like, the very first shift against Montreal. Yeah, like it's set up for beautiful, you know, opportunity in the slot, and uh, wasn't able to put it in the back of the net either. So he's come close. He's come close. It's just he's got to, you know, the finish hasn't quite been there. I wonder if you know, getting back into Buffalo, if those juices start to start to flow a little more, and he can, you know, give a little up yours to the the Buffalo faithful there. Um, I think I think he scores one tonight. He's someone who I'm kind of looking at over on FanDuel and. Probably placing an anytime goal scoring wager. That's what I'm looking at tonight. So uh, it should be a fun one, though. And and, and look, I, Toronto's got to start winning games too. Like they're not necessarily what are they, six and four in their last ten games. Like just barely over five hundred in their last ten. Like this is a team that we still want to be fighting for home ice advantage in the first round. And being six and four, just the hair over five hundred. When you look how poor that schedule was, like that five games that they had coming out against those bottom tier teams, they ended up going three and two. Right? They needed to do better than that. They needed to go minimum, minimum eight of ten points, and they only picked up six of uh, of the ten points. So. It's a little bit of an upsetting start, but you know now they're playing some teams who are hungry that are still motivated to make a run at the playoffs. And you know, okay, you can't beat the the bottom dwellers. You got to make sure that you beat these teams then, which they've been able to do, just not Buffalo. So uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see kind of how things end up playing uh, playing out tonight. Um, the other thing that I wanted to uh, to mention to you, which I thought was interesting for how. FanDuel believes this game's going to go because it's it's the over under set seven. Typically, the over under is set between five and a half and six and a half, and set at seven, which means they are expecting a goal scoring bonanza. And if you do recall, like Samsonov on the road, which we just saw him on the road, and again, kind of a 
not so great start in Chicago. Him on the road against Tage Thompson, Jeff Skinner, uh, Alex Tuck. And they think about Toronto's high scoring offense. They're expecting a lot of goals tonight. And honestly, so am I. So you should be able to see a lot of uh, a Geno's tonight down at uh, what do they call it? I was like Key Bank still. Key Bank. Yep. Key Bank Center. There you go. Yeah, it's going it, to. I do think, I mean, considering how the Chicago, like the least defense hasn't looked great on the road. At home, it's been okay. It's been hasn't been as bad, but on the road, matchups haven't been haven't been as kind to them. So, so I think now, so now you got Noel Chari though. You can play your you can roll four lines and feel very confident. Even if you get pinned, your fourth line gets pinned on an icing. You feel a lot better with Noel Chari on that fourth line with Zach Gass and Reese than you do with um or and and yeah than you do when it was you know. Joey Anderson or you know, I guess Pontus Holmberg has played okay, but you know what I mean? Like you just feel more comfortable with a guy like that on the ice and you can roll four lines. It's just, just it brings Sheldon Keefe just a level of comfort, I think, um, with you know, these new guys coming in and just creating more depth with the roster. Yeah, I know it certainly does. And Maybe that'll be you know once the guy they get a little more, few more games under their belt they'll feel a little bit better, and you'll start to see them get you know start to con- I mean they they've already contributed quite a bit you know since they've joined but maybe this the the more, we're we're gonna see why Kyle Dubas paid the price that he did to get these guys. Yeah, absolutely. The midway point of the NHL season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel. It's North America's number one sports book because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your bet does not win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from money line to point scores to goal scores. They got it all tonight. If you want to go and place a wager on the Toronto Maple Leafs, you can bet them minus 172 on the money line. If you think they'll win by two or more, good value at plus 144 on the uh, the puck line. Those available at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the Locked On Network. Uh, any other final thoughts on today's show? Uh, first off, a very big thank you to everybody who, uh, Watched all those vi- that watched the video. It was our, I mean, obviously by far mile our biggest video on YouTube since we started posting regularly on the channel. So need need to give a little shout out to all those who have been coming back, have been doing this nonstop since we've started, and then the new people who joined. We had quite a few subscribers come up, so this is this is good. Yeah, I think we had almost a hundred new subs off that video. Close to that, yeah, yeah. Um, that was pr- that was pretty impressive. I, I I'm not gonna lie. We've been calling for new subscribers, so hopefully, um, you like what you heard and you want to hear more of it. And yeah, we were. And I'll say this: we, Mike and I, we th- we pushed, we hustled when that news came out because we knew other people were gonna be racked into it. So we had to get something up. Within five minutes, Dave, you and I were were recording an episode, a reaction pod to to put out there for for people to to watch and to listen to. And clearly, there was uh, there were people who were looking for it and wanted it because yeah, it, it performed very well. So we we thank you all very much to who uh, who went and and watched it and left a comment, lots of comments, lots of likes, thumbs up. Uh, it was it was terrific. It was great to see. And uh, we, we love the support. And, you know, there's there's still work to be done, though. Like, I think Kyle Dubas still has a trick up his sleeve. There's still, I think, one more move that uh, that could be done. So there might be another reaction video coming at some point because why would he ever do something at a normal hour, like midday? No, it's got to be a midnight trade and on a Friday or a Saturday night, and we're going to have to, you know, hunker down and 
and do this all over again. Um, but it was a lot of fun. It was so much fun reacting to trades like that. That's we, why we you get into this business. This li- doing it live, too. We were like... We did. We and were we, thinking about it. But yeah, then- we had a couple people in the Discord say, oh, did you have you ever thought about going live for something like that? And yeah, we did think about it. But uh, unfortunately... We did on trade deadline day. We did go live. And we the, and then I'm like, ah, this probably would have been the opportunity. Let's just hope Kyle Dubas... If Kyle Dubas does another big trade, I mean... I don't know how many bullets he has left in the chamber, but if if another big deal comes about, maybe we'll consider going live if uh, it doesn't happen at one o'clock in the morning or something like that. Yeah. Either way, let us know in the comment section below if you're interested in us going live, maybe for like a post game podcast. I, I know there's a couple of people in the market who are doing those now. If you're interested in us doing that, um, so you can get in on it and you can ask us the questions and we can respond to them in the chat. Um, you know, we might be interested in doing something like that, too, if you guys are up for it. If we're going to get the support, I think it's something that we could look into. Certainly certainly could get something like that going in the playoffs. And maybe a couple trial runs leading up to it perhaps could be uh, could be in the works. At least the games where, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not down at, at Scotiabank, which most home games. So there's rural games we're going to have to <laughs> we're gonna be doing those mostly. But uh, actually, really quickly, I – just want to show you a couple of things. One of the, a couple of cool things that I bought this weekend. I was at a, a card show. I just want to show you one of the coolest pickups that I made. It's not a Maple Leafs hockey card. So if you're a hockey card fan, this is this is right up your alley. Then, if not, appreciate you tuning in for the show. Um, so it's a Brent Burns uh, patch auto from the Cup and. For those who aren't aware, the cup is like the most expensive brand of, of hockey cards you can get. And I found this bad boy, which is a sweet autograph he has, first of all. Very cool autograph. And a three-color patch. And I found it in a box and ended up negotiating. I got it for like 30 40 bucks, I think. It was in a big lot with a bunch of different things. I got a Beau Bichette rookie card as well. And I was involved with it and... Some other cool things. I got a Tarasenko, Young Guns graded rookie, hoping that maybe he goes off for uh, for the New York Rangers. So I got a couple of cool little pieces this past weekend, which uh, which is awesome. Look, th- this one was really cool too, actually. So this is a Florida Panthers jersey patch, number to twenty eight of Alex Barkov, game used patch at that, which is really really cool. So a couple of cool things that I picked up. Andre Vasilevsky. That's uh, a rookie patch auto three color. That's I didn't I had this for a while. I didn't pick it up this weekend. I bought this years ago when he was a rookie. I think I paid like 30 bucks for it. It's worth a lot more than that now. I'll tell you that for free. But uh, yeah, it was really fun. Really fun. uh, Really fun going to those card shows you guys are interested in that type of content too let us know in the comment section below all right buddy we'll wrap things up here uh enjoy the game everybody um that'll do it for us here today on the podcast thank you all for listening and supporting the show you can subscribe to the uh locked on these podcasts and all podcast platforms receive daily leaves content all the subscribe also subscribe to us on youtube leave a, a like and a comment below as well that'd be greatly appreciated uh, you can follow myself on twitter at mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morasuti and uh, follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. Why did I just see a random uh, news? NASA confirms half ton meteor crashed in South Texas. This is the notification I just received on my phone. What is going on in the world, Dave? Oh, man. Wow. Wow. All right. <laughs> it's one way to end the podcast. That's for what sure. What a sign off. What a sign off on the pod. Enjoy the game. Uh, go Leafs go. They'll be down in Buffalo. You'll be down in Buffalo. You'll yeah. have to report to us on what the wing situation was like, how many beers you downed. We need the whole 411 on your experience on tomorrow's show. All right? You, you, you get, the, get that for us? I should be able to, yes. Absolutely, you should. All right, guys, we'll be back another episode for you guys tomorrow. But until then, keep it locked right here on Lockdown Leafs.